and a Canadian and an Irishman on a Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> it should it, it should be good. It should be good. Welcome, guys. It is uh, great to see you. So we we're going to try and keep to the to, to the one hour mark because uh, we know everybody is is busy and everybody has lots of things to do. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen and oh, looks like I'm going to share the screen there. And I just want to go through what we're going to be talking about. So just give me one second here to make sure it shares correctly. And as Ronnie said, you know, we're here to answer your questions. So if there's anything that you need, if you have questions, just uh, let us know. Um, and then Ronnie will feed them uh, to me. So myself and Ronnie have been talking about this for quite some time to have an open office hours where we can answer your questions, where we can demo content, uh, where we can show you how you can actually use our content and how we're going to structure this. Um, and it is going to be quite uh, fluid as well. So uh, we, we may go off on a tangent and I am great at going off on tangents. Um, but what we want to talk about is who am I? Uh, why are we here? Uh, what is PLR? Because this is a question that we get a lot, but that people aren't quite sure exactly what PLR is. Um, how do we find content as in how do you find content on the site and i want to talk about an article because articles are, are sometimes kind of just left behind that people think well an article is just an article but i want to show you what we can do with an article and probably one of the most important things and i, and I think will be a great takeaway for you is how do we realign content because it's a big question that we get asked what do I do with your content? How do I use your content? And um, for us, the answer is simple, but that's because we've been doing this for so long. But sometimes people have, they have different questions about the content and we're gonna talk all about that. So I guess the first question is to introduce this, uh, this rather handsome Irishman, I know so my mother says to me anyway. <laughs> um, I'm Richard. I have been a member of PLR.me for, um, it's going on 10, 10 years, I think it is, Ronnie. Um, Since 2009, so whatever that is, 12 years? That's, I, I've, lost, I've lost count at this stage. I've lost count at this stage. <laughs> um, I discovered, like many people, I discovered PLR.me, and I, I'd heard about PLR, and then I saw this site for coaches, and I thought, this looks really, really interesting, because what... As you know, what PLR.me was providing was content that you could take and make your own. And at that time, I was skeptical. I, I'll admit that. I, I signed up and I said, okay, I'm gonna give this site a chance. Like so many other sites, if I get a year out of membership, I'll be lucky because who knows where they could be in a year or 12 months. Um, but 12 years later, PLR.me is going, is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And I've been a member ever since. And I always say to people, hand on heart, I can say I have never downloaded something and I didn't like it. I've, it's never happened to me. It's always just been superb uh, quality, but I'm jumping ahead. Um, you wanna know about me, hopefully. Um, I, am, I wear many hats, I'm a, Life and business coach. Um, I'm starting to focus now more on the sort of mindful present moment um, area and aligning that with success principles of how to be successful in living, living your best life, living your life right now. But I also am uh, uh, an English teacher as well. And I also take on high level clients to work with them to help them with their English because I'm based in Barcelona in Spain. And there's a huge demand that people are looking for English. And I'm going to show you something of how I can use the content from PLR.me, not only for my coaching business, but also for my English language um, uh, teaching business as well. So, you know, you're, you're going to see a lot of how we use this. Um, as I said, I, I discovered PLR.me and it's my one go-to source for content. I use it every single day. And about two years ago, I think it was, maybe it's two and a half years ago, Ronnie, um, I'd always been in touch with Ronnie. I'd always been emailing him and uh, we'd been in contact for many, many years. 
And Ronnie reached out to me and he said, Richard, you're probably, I don't know whether he said, you're probably one of our oldest members, as in oldest or, or that I've been uh, in the membership for a long time. And he said, would you be interested in helping us with the videos, some training videos and um, talking to people about PLR.me and helping them uh, understand exactly what it is and how it could actually help. So I jumped on the opportunity and I started just doing one or two videos every couple of weeks for Ronnie. And slowly but surely, I start doing more and more and more um, until I actually uh, moved over. And now uh, I am basically a, 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 an employee of uh, PLO.me as well. Um, for me, it was a natural choice. It aligned with everything that I, that I, I believe in because it's just, I believe in PLR.me so much. I believe in the content. I believe in um, what we actually do. Um, so that's that's me. Um, why an open office? Well, we get a lot of questions from people about our content. And people ask us, you know, what is it? Uh, how can I use it? Uh, what about this? What about that? And we decided, well, the best way to for you guys to get to know us is to actually have this open office. And we're gonna make it a regular event where we're actually going to help you um, discover how you can actually use the content. Uh, any questions that I need to address yet, Ronnie, I see there's 17. Um, it is live, by the way, people. Yes. <laughs> people are asking if it's live. Um, so, I mean, let's let's kind of skip ahead to, I mean, so everyone knows Richard's awesome. If you haven't had an interaction with him through the content calendar videos or the any of the our YouTube videos, or maybe you've spent some time on a phone call with Richard and where he walks you through um, your specific needs, um, Richard's awesome. And, and Richard's our go-to go-to guy when it comes to training and education. Um, and so what we want to talk about right now is, is and we'll kind of just kind of let's keep moving because I know there's a lot of questions that people have uh, and we will we will absolutely get to your questions uh, questions that you submitted in advance and then any questions that come up today um, but what is PLR now I started PLR.me back in 2008 <laughs> it's been a while now um, and I started it because before PLR.me I was a stress coach I've been on national television again Richard's a coach himself and there is a huge need for content because the whole way the internet works is it's based on content, whether that's text, whether that's podcasts and videos and webinars and all that stuff, it's all content based. And I started it because other people, other uh, colleagues, coaches and, and consultants, they were wondering, how am I getting on TV and how am I getting you know, to the top of Google search or and all of that, all of those questions relating to content. And I realized, oh, people need help. <laughs> people need help to kind of organize their content, their product lines, and so on. Uh, PLR stands for private label rights. And, um, and all that means is it's brandable content, content that you can take and you can rewrite, you can realign it to your own vision, your voice, your standards, um, and make it your own and, and sell it as your own. Um, so that's what PLR is. Um, and um, we're going to get to a uh, uh, toy. Have you know how much of the content do you legally need to change? It's a great question because we're talking about PLR now. Um, you don't have to change anything, so it's not a legal requirement to change anything. We have some clients who have membership sites, uh, or they want to have a handout that they print off and give to a client. Let's say you're talking about stress and you know ways to uh, de-stress you can just print off a handout and, and hand it to your client or if you have a membership site you can put the content in your membership site but we always recommend making it your own because you want to add your own voice your style your branding your colors uh, maybe your case studies your examples you want it to align with you and your brand um richard back to you yeah i think the you know the important thing here is that you've come across this concept of private labor rights in your day-to-day -day life. If you go to a supermarket, when they have their own brand of products, they haven't produced those products. They have gone out, they have licensed, and the key here is they've licensed the uh, the bread, the cornflakes, whatever it may be, and they've said, can we put our own brand on it? So that's exactly what you are doing here. Um, we, are, we are giving you a license to use the content as your own. And as Ronnie said, there's no legal requirement of how much you need to change, but 
there's that's going to come up because we, we want to answer that question because it's a it's a very pertinent question that we get a lot how much do i have to change what can i do with this content etc cetera, etc cetera. um let me just what i'd like to do is i would like to switch over to my screen and just uh show you how i can actually uh search for content because you know i i've talked to people and one of the things and i see it as a compliment they say i'm like a kid in a candy store there's so much content here what do i do the first thing you need to think about is the keywords or the challenges that your target client has Okay, and think of keywords as in, um, you know, not, it doesn't have to be specific of success for the over 50s. Just let's start with success, because one of the key elements of our content is that it can be fully uh, edited and changed for your target audience. And, that, and this is really important. So if I just go in here and I, I just do a search, and I'm going to show you um, another search that I've done here. I see that there's... Um, 1845 plr products for the word success that's a lot okay so the first thing that you can do is you can actually go down and you can filter or refine by a category so i might say well i want success wealth and prosperity but a career coach may come along and say well actually i'm just looking for a career and job or a parenting coach can say well i'm just looking for parenting and family content but let me go into success wealth and prosperity this will reduce or refine the search results down to 645, but we want to do better than that. And what we can do is we can now go and we can look at the different types of content that we actually have. So here we have wallpapers, affirmations, but I just want to look at articles and blog posts. So I click on articles and blog posts and that filters again by that category and it gives me all of these items here. Now, let me just bring over my uh, screen here because um, there's a particular one I want to show you. This article, seven tips for success you can use today. Okay. Um, I want to know what that content looks like. So if I just open up that content there, the first thing I'm going to see, it's very, very important that you click on what we call the tile. Let me just go back to that screen there. There's a, uh, this is what we call the tile. And from here, you could download this straight away if you want to, but I do recommend that you click on it and then you open up the description page. And if you scroll down, you're gonna see some very important information. The first piece of information is how much this content costs and it costs one credit. And I'll explain to you about uh, credits just in a second, but you see here that it says something about one credit is 40 to 220. We'll look at that in a, in a second. Don't, uh, don't worry too much about that. The second thing that you are told is the type of files that are included. So we always include um, a Word document, a PDF, and a text document. Now, what's the difference? The Word document is the editable um, document that you can open up in Microsoft Word, or you could open up in a Google Doc, and you can make all the changes that you want to that particular document. And you are not limited to the amount of changes that you can make. You can, I would say you can slice it, you can dice it, you can do anything that you want. You could even combine this article with something from your own experience. You can put in your own case study, your own quotes, or you can combine four or five articles uh, as well. You get the PDF. As Ronnie said, the PDF is the ready to go, fully designed um, document that you can print out and give to your clients. And this is how it looks here, okay? We give you this preview so that you can see the layout of the document and how many pages there are there, okay? So here we can see there's three pages, it's nicely laid out and I can go ahead and I can actually download that. Um, any questions so far? Are, um, there there are some questions. Highlight? So. Um, yeah, so some uh, some people were asking about you know how credits work and and, and how mm -hmm. that we can definitely talk about that now since we're there, um, and and also you know how editing works. Uh, I think Kent okay. was asking, um, can you like if you change the docx file, will the PDF automatically change? Okay. And uh, um, yeah, so I'll, I'll let you answer some of those. Okay, good point. Okay, so the credits work if you um, with a free account, you get two credits per month. 
uh, as a gift from us. And that means that, yeah, I could download this document with my two free credits and I would have one credit left over. If you have a paid account, depending on what level you're at, the document will either cost the equivalent of 40 cent or $2.20. And I'm everywhere on the side. Here I am again. I pop up here explaining about credits. Um, we do a number of different levels to cater for everybody. That we have pay as you go credits. If I just if, if I just say these four documents, I just want those. I could go in and I could buy ten credits for twenty two dollars, and then I can just download those documents. Or we have a monthly membership, or we have yearly memberships. So depending on which one of these packages you actually invest in that will depend on the actual credit price or the, or the dollar value of each credit. Like everything, the, the, the more credits you buy, the uh, cheaper the actual credits get. Now, even at $2.20, if you've ever tried to outsource or get an article written, you will not get anything written for $2.20. Okay, so even at pay as you go, it's an extremely um, great uh, price on that. Now, the PDF versus the Word document. The PDF um, version won't change if you change the Word document. So what you would do is you would make your changes in the Word document, and then you would save it out as an actual PDF. Okay, so if I see, I'm going to have to do another uh, share here. So apologies just for sharing my screen again. Um, if I download that document there, the seven tips for success you can use today, you will see that when I unzip it, because it comes down as, as a zip file, which is a compressed file, I get the uh, Word document, which I can just open up there. And I'll just preview that. Just, oh no, you won't be able to see that because I'm not sharing it. Um, but I get the Word document. I oh, get we can see it. It did show, it did show. You can oh, it did show, did it? Yep. Ah, okay, so you can see it there. Okay, so that's the Word document with formatting. Then we get the PDF, which has the full formatting on it. And then you also get the actual text format as well. Now, the text format is for people who want to uh, just have a completely unformatted document so that they can upload that onto LinkedIn, for example, if they wanted to uh, put this into LinkedIn or if they wanted to put it on Facebook or on Twitter, etc. Okay. Um, so you would open it up, you would brand it as your own, and then you would actually export that out. Um, I would suggest to people, a lot of our, our, our clients use Canva. So I would suggest that if you know about Canva or you know what this is, you could actually copy and paste the text into a Canva template. And don't worry, we will be going through all of those things in future open offices. So if you're not sure what Canva is, don't worry. But Rest and sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt, mm. uh, Richard. We do have a video tutorial uh, that I mm. put together uh, about how to create a beautiful PDF using Canva. Um, I po post, uh, pasted the link in the chat, but also, Richard, maybe just if you don't mind taking a second, just to quickly show where to find these videos. So if you're watching the replay later uh, and you can't see the chat, obviously, um, you know, how do you find all of these awesome video training that we produce? If you don't mind just quickly showing that. Yeah, of course, I'll show you that now. Let me just go back to Safari. So what you will see here is if I just go to plr.me and videos, um, we have a lot of free uh, videos here and growing. And here I am again. Um, and here I am again and again and again and again. So. <laughs> you, can, you can see I'm all over the site. Um, here's our tutorials. So this is the one that um, Ronnie mentioned here, how to create a, a beautiful PDF using Canva, um, how, to use an, how to create an infographic using Canva, how to repurpose an article into a podcast. So I recommend you take uh, time to have a look through those tutorials completely. You don't have to have any type of uh, a membership. These are free, open to the public to actually have a look at those. Um, and we're going to be bringing out even more tutorials to help you get the most out of the content. And, and before you leave this page, Richard, because there's yes. a bunch of questions related to this. So um, Sandy was asking about how to create videos using the eBooks, for example. Uh, Richard, I know you put together a course, uh, sorry, a, a video series about how to create mm -hmm. a course. Um, so if you can just scroll down about, uh, I think it's probably a little bit lower down. 
Uh, or mm -hmm. it might actually be in the playlist. It's actually in tutorials here. Yep, uh, in the tutorials. Um, so if you go to see more, uh, so in, we have a whole series of videos of how Richard put together a course in a weekend. I think it took you, a, a, what, a day and a half or something like that to put yeah. together uh, put together a complete course and he, you used articles. So he put together several articles, stitched them together, and then just recorded them. He recorded a video course using the articles. Um, sorry, Richard, go to the top of the videos page. Okay. Uh, and click on playlist there. There's also the search button. So you can also search um, and hear how to build a course using plr.me content. So um, that's an example there of, of how you can create a course in, um, you know, in this case, you used Udemy. Uh, mm -hmm. you, could, you can host a course anywhere you'd like, but just to show you what Richard put together here. Um, okay. Uh, and um, okay, so there's a lot of questions and it's very difficult to keep. You guys are amazing. Um, but wow, I, if I talk for like one minute, I just have to like read for like 10 minutes, it looks like. Um, uh, okay. But, so I, I'm sorry, I'll I, I, you'll take over one, one other question that someone mentioned or a comment someone mentioned. I didn't even think of using Canva, I just formatted it. This is Melissa. Um, I didn't even think of using Canva. I just formatted it in Google Docs and then to my website. I love the idea of mm -hmm. using Canva. I mean, honestly, both work, right? So Canva, mm -hmm. people love Canva, use Canva. If you're familiar with it, awesome. Um, I found, and you'll, you'll notice from the video training that I mentioned, Canva can be a little bit finicky when it comes to a lot of text. So if your PDF is like 20 pages, it's super finicky. You're better off to format in something like Microsoft Word or Google Docs. Uh, but for something short, a one or two pager, you know, Canva is fantastic. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Okay, uh, just one last thing just before I go back to the slides, because I want to get on to the two important questions that uh, that people always ask us. Um, when you actually scroll down on the description page, and it's a it's a really important page to, to, to get the overview of the document, you will actually see recommended products here as well. So it's like when you go to Amazon that they say people also bought or people also looked at. So for example, I might start this seven tips for success you can use today. And then I look down here and I say 10 signs to see, uh, 10 signs you see on the road to success. And this is an action guide. And if I go in here, action guides are great because they are just that, a guide for people to take action. So I can go down a rabbit hole here because then I will see more ideas here. So also look at that in case you're thinking, well, what else could I use with this particular piece of content? Um, because it's, you know, it's always useful to have that. And then you can say, oh, well, maybe that's how I could actually uh, build more in there. Now, if I just go back to um, our slide deck, we do have to talk about the elephant in the room. Okay. And the elephant in the room that we have is, well, the first one was, can I actually see the content before I actually download it? As I showed you on the description page, we tell you about the content and we give you what we call our product showcase, which shows the actual three pages, or if it's an ebook, it shows you the layout of the ebook. Um, because we wanna make sure that everything is properly licensed, you can't actually read the content in its entirety. But it, let me put it this way, we wouldn't be where we are today, 12 years on, if the content wasn't hitting all of the right uh, marks with our actual uh, clients. So. We give you the two free credits so that you can download some content and you can actually see what the content is like. We also have a sample pack as well that you can actually um, download. I don't know if you have that, Ronnie, or you can stick that into the actual... Uh, I'll grab the link and I'll put it into the chat in just a second. Perfect. The second big um, elephant in the room that people ask us about is, what about plagiarism? You see... I don't really like using this because I didn't write it. It's not my voice. Who wrote your content? Where did it come from? So our content is written by our team of in-house writers. They don't write for anybody else. They write exclusively for us. And we provide you with a license for you to take our content and use it as your own. Now, you can use it as is. But the thing that we always say is that what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to align the content with you and your audience. 
Okay. I have the, uh, the document that I showed you, which was seven tips for success you can use today. Now, my audience are people who are looking for success, maybe present moment uh, mindset and success, but they are also people who are looking to learn or improve their English. Two completely different markets. But I can say, well, what's the first thing I would say is, what is the outcome that I want from this document? Well, I want to educate people. I want to help them. Um, I want people who are learning English. And again, it's completely removed from, from the, the whole world of uh, coaching and uh, uh, mentoring. But I can use this and I can say, okay, well, the first item is find a mentor. If you want to improve your English, find a mentor. The second thing is care less about what others think of you and more about how you feel about yourself. Because if you've ever tried to learn a second language, you do get embarrassed because you don't pronounce it correctly or you say something where you make a mistake. Um, and I can just move through that document and align it for the audience that I want to target, that are my audience. Your tribe is different from my tribe. Um, the content that I want to give out to these people, we may use the same basis, but we align it for the people that we actually want to um, target and that we actually want to help. And because you're licensing the content, well, there's no problems with plagiarism because uh, you have the content, you take the content and you align it to your actual tribe. It's not just about changing a few words. It's about making it speak from, from you. This is Richard's voice and aligning it not only with Richard's voice, but what Richard stands for as well and what he wants his tribe to stand for. So don't worry about that. I, I, you know, it, it's, it's not something that you want to, to, to worry about because we have it, you know, that our writers write for us. We give you the content. As I said, we recommend that you make sure that it is your voice. It's so much easier to start with some content than write from scratch. If you said to me right now, Richard, write me a three-page article about goal setting and mindfulness. I'm going to be here for days. Obviously, I'm going to be here for days. But if I go to the PLR.me library and I look at the content and I download the resource, that starts to get the wheels churning. And I say, okay, yeah, that's exactly what I want. I want to give people seven steps to successful um, mindfulness success. And I just changed that article. And within 20 minutes, I could have the whole article rewritten and aligned for my actual audience. Um, okay, questions. Okay. Um, so Julia was saying, I rewrite because I don't want to be penalized by Google for having duplicate content if others are using it. Um, so let's talk a little bit about SEO. And there was a couple of questions about SEO. Um, uh, I know, do you want to tackle that first? Going to go for that? Yeah, SEO, there's so many factors to SEO. SEO is, uh, you know, you could spend days, weeks, months trying to get to the top of, of Google. But, you know, mindfulness coach, there's no way I can get to the top of Google for that particular keyword. But I would need to um, be more specific. Mindful, mindfulness coaches, English, English mindfulness coaches, Barcelona. That would be more specific. I could target that. But it's not just about writing the content on your website. There's so many different signals that Google looks for, from social media to shares to likes to page speed to everything. Honestly, what I say to people is write from the heart. Don't write for the search engine. Write for your tribe. And that is going to really, really help you. Um, if you focus... Yeah. Do you, Sorry, I was just going to say you, you, you nailed it there, right? I mean, if you take the content and inject your own stories, examples, and uh, relate it to your audience. So, I mean, reading through your comments, there are people who do all sorts of amazing things and, and helping people in such unique and inspirational ways. And I'm, I'm in awe of all of you, and I'm amazed at what you do. Inject those examples and stories and, and, and case studies and your personal stories, but also maybe the stories of your clients into the content. That's what makes it unique. Um, also transforming the content, right? Google isn't really just about text. Google also um, is about video content, 
Um, you're going to be ranked in, in all sorts of different unique ways if you're using different forms of content. So some of our most successful clients, they're turning the text into videos, social posts, infographics, or combining and mash, mashing up together multiple forms of content where a blog post has an audio recording of the post, an infographic version of the post, and then the text, which they injected and re realigned to their brand and their, and their clients. That will let take more work, sure, but you're not writing from scratch. So it doesn't take as much work at all um, when, you're, when you're having the foundation written for you and you're just reading it and giving an example and giving a story, um, and adding your own images. And, uh, and, and, and uh, you know, like I said, you're, what makes you unique put that into the content. And that's actually what is most important when it comes to, to Google search. But uh, Richard, as you said, it's not just really about text anymore. Um, it is about your page speed. It is about your inbound links. It is about, you know, your title tags and meta tags. And it's about mobile optimization. Like Google search is not just about who has the best content. It really isn't. You could have the best content on the slowest loading site and you'll be nowhere to be found. So it's mm -hmm. very technical. It's very complicated. It's really kind of out of the scope of, of what we can talk about today because we're not like Google SEO gurus, <laughs> but I can tell you that it is a whole lot more complicated um, than, than it, than it um, really than it needs to be. But Google, mm -hmm. that's how Google is. Like they set the rules. Um, so yeah, go ahead. Just, just one question, just because I was scrolling through the, the masses of questions there. Um, that Sandy asked, do people still buy ebooks? I mean, she says videos are more in demand. I think yes, because we have to remember that different people will consume in different ways. Um, I like, I like videos a lot, but most of the videos that I watch, I don't actually watch. I listen to them. I have YouTube open in a tab. I have a training course open in a tab, but I'm listening to it. But sometimes I want to print out the, the the notes that go along with it and highlight the important points. So I think you can have ebooks. I think they're still in demand. But some people like videos. Some people like the audios. So what what I suggest is take one of our ebooks, look at the table of contents, and that becomes the series of videos for you. So that chapter one is video one, chapter two is video two, and you use the book as your script. So that you're just taking it. Now, people get stressed and they say, but I can't do video because I need a whole crew. I need this. I need a fancy camera. No. If you see the videos that I started with, even with PLR.me, I was like, I was just whispering and running upset. I was, I was really bad. I was so, I was so, I don't know what the word was. I was scared. <laughs> but as I did more videos, and as I got more feedback, well, then I got better. And now, okay, I have like three or four cameras here now in the office, but my go-to camera is really the, the a smartphone. I've been using the smartphones for doing the recordings and your simple headphones can is everything that you need. So, you know, start to think outside the box. As Ronnie said, sometimes some of the content that we see that people send us and they say, look what I do with your content. We're like, hold on a second that's not the content no way because it's completely different because they just take it and they realign to their needs and the needs of their uh of their audience so this is the key um you you need to take the content and realign and again i'm, I'm going to, to to sort of keep saying that but it's so important to do that um any, so sorry anything? uh there's yeah. so uh jing uh, uh, Jing, Mark, and Glow said, I use my ebook to give away to some uh, and to others, I sell it. So, yes, in my case, the ebook does quite well. Um, mm. So, and Sherry says, I buy ebooks because a lot of the times you can get a whole book read in a quarter of the time. Um, how long are ebooks? Uh, Carolyn uh, was asking. Uh, so, typically, our ebooks are anywhere from 30 to 60 pages. It depends. Um, you will be able to see the number of pages when you go into the product, the ebook, you will see the table of contents. Actually, Richard, maybe while I'm talking, um, yeah. if you can just pull up an ebook and, and show that you'll see the table of contents and then you'll scroll down and you'll see a page view. You'll see every page of the ebook, um, in a, in a, in a small picture, but you'll be able to see how many pages it is and the layout, the way it looks, um, how it, how it feels. Um, uh, Brian. Hill, uh, you know, you're asking about culturally specific. 
content. Um, again, the, the nice thing about the, the way that the, the, the PLR content is, is you get the source files. So you know your audience better than anyone else. And Brian, the way you're going to write to your audience is going to be very different than the way Julia will write to her audience and different than Sherry and Melissa and so on. So you can take this ebook. Now, in this case, this is about intermittent fasting. So this is, you know, maybe you don't write about that topic and that's totally fine, but maybe you write about intermittent fasting. Uh, sorry, maybe you write about diet and health and fitness when it comes to teenagers or men or women or you name it. And so you can customize and tweak it to make it your own. Um, you, you have to be able to inject your voice and your, your customer's struggles and their questions and their problems into the content. That's your job. That's how you can make it your own. Okay, so um, the table of contents. So we can see here, this is the table of contents for the intermittent fasting book. Uh, on the right, um, you see the sidebar, uh, sorry, Richard, on the right, you see what, what files are included, the, the credits, uh, the credits for eBooks are 10 credits. Why are they 10 credits? Not one credit, not 100. Um, eBooks, of course, there's more design involved. There's a lot more content involved. And um, so obviously it makes sense that an ebook is gonna cost more for us to create and to design and to edit and to research and all of that stuff than it would for an article. So that's why it's 10 credits. And um, you can see this ebook is 61 pages. So if you don't mind scrolling down, Richard, just to, to show that. So you can see we have beautiful quote um, designs within the book and you can see the, the way the page layout is. Um, the nice thing about content is it really is the foundation. You can use it as is, but you can also take this and yank out a chapter and that can become the framework for a live stream on Facebook or on YouTube or a video. Uh, or you can yank out a couple of chapters and turn it into a webinar, kind of like what we're doing right now, where you can educate your audience about intermittent fasting or about success or confidence or whatever your topics are. So you can use the ebook, not as an ebook, but as a foundation for something else. Yeah, perfect. So, uh, you know, what I said to people is week, uh, week one introduction. Week two, we're going to talk about the benefits. Week three, the risks. And you have everything there. Then what you can do is you can say, as a bonus, I'm going to offer you the actual ebook as well so that you can download it and reference it as well. The idea is to repurpose content as much as you can. Because I always say to people, once you have a video, you can, and uh, it's a topic we will talk about, you can extract the audio from the video and have an audio recording for those who prefer to listen to the audio when they're on their commute, in the gym, et cetera, in the car. So always think about that. But, you know, I think the key to all of this is knowing who your client base are. And, and that may seem like a strange statement to say, but I've talked to people and I say, well, what do you do? I'm a coach. Who do you coach? Everyone. What do you coach them on? Everything. And I say, okay, I think we need to just get a little bit more specific on this because the, the, the challenges that males between 18 and 25 have compared to 45 to 55 are going to be completely different. And you want to focus in and say, okay, this is my niche. These are the people I'm going to target. And these are the challenges, the challenges that they have. And this is how I'm going to help them. So intermittent fasting for that younger age group is completely different for us wiser men rather than older men, us wiser men. <laughs> so where, some where we find we just can't shift the, shift yeah. the path there. <laughs> so some rapid fire questions. So Jennifer, can mm. you sell uh, the ebook on Amazon? Um, so quick uh, answer is on uh, Kindle, no. Kindle is, uh, that's an Amazon policy where they don't allow any content that's been pre-published somewhere else. They don't allow that. So, so Amazon Kindle is out. You can absolutely create physical products, like physical books that you print and sell those on Amazon. That's no problem. Um, so Regina said, can you use the ebook or PLR content for free training in your VSL uh, on your video sales letter or video training? Yes, absolutely. Fantastic way of using the content. Grab it, turn it into a video presentation. Um, great way to do that. Uh, Kent, can, for eBooks, 
can we keep the pictures? Yes, absolutely. You can keep the pictures. Um, I forget who asked earlier, but someone was asking about uh, royalty-free photos. Uh, all of the pictures that we use are completely royalty-free and they're, they're free for you to use. Uh, if you're wondering where we get pictures from, uh, we use a, a couple of different ones. Uh, one is called unsplash.com, unsplash.com. Pexels is another P-E-X-E-L-S. Dot com and Pixab Bay, P I X A B A Y dot com. Um, so, so those are great tools, and there are many, many others where you can get beautiful photos um, to use in your um, uh, in, in your ebooks, on your covers, on your website, wherever you'd like. Um, okay, so sorry, Ronell, can you take out sections and use them as separate articles? Yes. <laughs> and download, there's a whole bunch of rapid fire questions about this, so I just wanted to quickly yeah. answer those. Um, and I think uh, Melissa's statement of the riches are in the niches is very true. Very true. That's very, very true. true. Uh, this question uh, from Ronel, uh, do any of your PL PLR resources have references, footnotes, or other citations to the sources of factual information? Yeah, so in terms of references, generally our content is written to be evergreen and to be mm -hmm really general public use. So think of a magazine. So we don't focus on academic research paper type of content. Um, you think of a magazine, you sort of read the, the magazine article and you learn something and you go from there. Uh, that's really the focus. There are, there are some resources that do have some references, but generally um, it's sort of more um, like, you know, tip trick based type of content. Like here's a strategy, you know, seven tips for success you can use today, you know, doesn't really require any resources. It was written completely by our in-house team. Um, and 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 uh, so what I mean by that is all of our writers, they're, they're vetted, they're industry experts themselves for something like this. They might be a coach or a consultant for our business and marketing content. They have a business and marketing background, um, you know, for mental health, they have a, a counseling background, for example. Um, and then we also check all of the content before publishing it to ensure that it hasn't been published before. We have several internal checks to make sure all the content is completely vetted and safe for you to use. Um, and of course, you, know, you go in there and you can edit and tweak it as you wish. So, you know, if something changes in this case, seven tips uh, for success, that's not something that changes, but um, you know, that's why we don't tend to do things like tax laws or, mm -hmm. you know, things that might change over time or is very regional specific. Um, but because you have the source files, you can make it your own. Yeah, it, one thing if I can, Ronnie, just because I, I know we want to get on to Q&A just uh, in the last uh, 10 to 15 minutes. This article here, Seven Tips for Success, if you look at this, you can align this to your niche. Seven Tips for Success, for example, for fitness coaches, you know, embrace your failures. Okay, so you fall off the wagon on your diet, on your schedule in the gym, embrace your failures, learn from it. Each day, take a step closer to your goal. Um, find a mentor, find a personal trainer. So you can take all of that and you can just align it to your processes. Now, I'll give you one quick tip, if I can. When, if I want to rewrite this uh, article, what I usually do is I just take, and each person is different, but I have the first paragraph up here and then I just start, set, okay, so staying consistent is how you achieve your goals and how you become successful. That's the first line written. Then I write the second line, the third line. And I use this, I think somebody else had, had put it in the chat, as a springboard for my ideas. So I don't have to write and start typing from an actual blank page. That is one of the keys. One other little tip that I'll give you is, this could easily be sent out as a tweet. For more information, check out the full article on my website. Okay, there's a there's a free tip for you guys uh, there. Um, there was one question I saw as well. Uh, let me just see here. Um, do you use the subscriber database to sell the rebranded PLR articles? Well, by yeah, this is like a it's kind of like a chip in the neck. How do we start off? Well, the thing is that if you start putting out more content more people will start to listen to you. More people will start to discover you. Um, you put out free content, people start coming to your site. They start um, engaging in your Facebook group. But one of the keys that I see is 
you have to ask for engagement. We're all, when we look at Instagram, nice picture, nice picture, nice picture. And then somebody puts, how does this relate to your life? And, and then you see there's 400 responses to that because you asked a question. Um, if you don't ask a question, most of us will not answer right off the bat. So engage, get, give opportunities for your audience to engage. I've just written this new article on my blog post, on my website. Uh, take a look and let me know what you think. I, I thought it was very good. I, I think it could be, you know, you could have covered this topic, et cetera, but get people to engage. I think that is so important. So that is then how you're gonna to start to build up your, your, your list or your database by getting people engaged. They then see what you have to offer. You then offer them something to sign up to your list. And then that starts the process. It's all about taking it step by step. That's that's the, the real thing. Uh, okay, Melissa says, OMG, a tweet, amazing. Okay. The the other thing, and I'm on a roll here, so just hold on one second, Ronnie, and I'll, I'll let you in in a second, is if you are on Clubhouse, you could use, and I haven't used Clubhouse, but you could use our content there by talking about one of the articles. Okay, you could say, hey guys, today I'm doing a clubhouse about seven tips for success you can use today. And because it's not a visual thing, you could just be reading it. So, you know, guys, I was thinking about it. And what I thought about is the first thing you really need to do is find a mentor. Find somebody who is going to help you. And that's it. Okay. And if you have a little bit of a following on clubhouse, you could experiment with that. It's something that I want to experiment with, but haven't yet had the time. Um, okay, Ronnie. Questions. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, there's there's a lot <laughs> mm. um okay so um are we going to talk about the tools christina is asking um let's we can briefly talk about it there are a lot of tools that we have we're not able to cover everything today and that will be something we will cover in future um in, in future office hours and i apologize if we didn't get to all of your questions we're going to do our best there was literally over 500 questions submitted um so we're wading through a lot of them plus questions that are submitted live. So there's a lot going on. Um, in terms of the tools on the website, you'll see Richard is pointing at the top, there's the tools section, and there are several tools listed there. Um, so the, the quick thing is I can tell you that all of those pages explain what the tools are, and there is a video um, showing what the tool does. Um, Richard, while you're hey, bringing Ronnie. that up, nice hey, ask me. <laughs> <laughs> that, yes, that was recorded a little <laughs> while ago. We probably need to update that one. But uh, yeah, so the, while you get maybe something um, branded here, because yeah, I know you downloaded the seven tips for success. So why don't you brand that? I'm going to put you on the spot and I'm going to explain what this one does. Um, so this is one of about a dozen tools that we have. What the PDF brander does is it allows you to put your logo or text um, on the PDF. So you can actually take a hundred PDFs. Like let's say you you want to put together your own little members area for your clients and you have a little download section, say, you know, Hey, after you have a, a coaching session about, you know, dealing with, uh, mental blocks when it comes to success, I want you to go read this seven tips for success article and you send your clients to your members area and they can go and download it. So you wanna have your branding on that PDF. In this case, you don't really want to rewrite it. It's just a resource that you read through, you like, it makes sense and it's a fit for your audience. So uh, in the span of what I was just talking, it's already been branded, okay? So Richard add in, added in a, a very simple line of text, get more success tips on my site and it's clickable, right? So you can go ahead and then click that and go to your website and of course you can Put your own website in there. Um, you can change the text um, and you can also change the placement of the branding, change the font, change the color. Uh, the, the neat thing is you can also say upload a hundred of these. You can literally download a hundred PDFs and upload a hundred PDFs to the PDF brander, click generate and boom, you now have a hundred branded PDFs that you can put onto, onto your membership site or um, you know distribute a print, whatever you'd like to your clients. Um, okay, okay. go for it. And I show just one really yes. one that I love is our product showcase. The, the, the challenge that a lot of people have is selling a digital product like you, and you know, because it's happened to yourselves, 
you said, I want to see what it looks like. So this is where our product showcase comes in. Uh, what this does is, well, let, let me just let me just do it rather than tell you what it does. So I'm just going to upload a PDF here. I'm going to click on generate. And look what this does. This does exactly what we do on our product description pages, that it shows you what you're actually getting. Because, you know, people are still, it's a digital product. I want to see what it's like. So you have your slide deck, you have your, your PDF. You can upload it here and create uh, one of those little product showcases. Those two are my favorite tools that we have. Uh, the ones that I always like to, to show and to use because they are my favorite. Um, sorry, Ronnie, go ahead. Um, so, yeah, sorry. There's there's um, several questions here. Um, so Toya is asking, can we create a weekly mastermind class for continued mentoring in this area or a Facebook group? Um, so two things about that. First, we are going to be uh, doing office hours at least weekly. Okay, so at least weekly. Um, maybe we'll, depending on you know demand, maybe we'll up that to twice a week. Uh, but at least weekly, we'll be here to answer your questions um, and, and help and support you. The second thing is when you become a member on a monthly or annual plan, we do have a Facebook mastermind group where you can get support and ask for help from other like-minded entrepreneurs just like yourselves um, or us. Richard is there. I'm there. Chantel is there. And we're, we're there to help. Um, so definitely uh, consider both of those options. Uh, obviously, we're here to help and support you with the office hours. Um, and then the Facebook group is for monthly and annual members. Um, okay, so uh, Khaled had uh, uh, said, how can I realign the content to my voice? And that's important for Udemy. Uh, Richard, you're a Udemy dude. Okay, I don't know how many students you have on Udemy, Udemy, however way you say it. Udemy. You, you dummy. <laughs> that, that's what you say to me. Um, yeah, so I don't know how many, you have a lot of students on Udemy. Mm. You've used mm. the PLR dummy content on Udemy. How have you realigned the content to suit you, your style, your brand, and used it on Udemy? Video. I, I just, uh, my tip for that is what, what I did when I actually created the course and you see in the videos is I literally took the PDFs, I printed them out, I highlighted the points that I wanted, and I had an idea of what I wanted to talk about. And then I just hit the record button and that was it. I think Udemy, I, I think with all these things, you need to be on camera. It's essential. If we did this open offices and we just did a PowerPoint and you didn't see us, it wouldn't be as effective. So if you want to be effective with your clients and you want to get them to know and like you, what you're going to want is they want to see you. Who is this person? And especially within coaching, it's the personal touch, which is so important. Because you might say, I'm with that Irish guy with this funny beard. And that's fine. There's plenty of others who love me, so that's okay. So I feel good. But, but this is it, that if you're on camera, you will actually filter people away, which is fine, because not every coach is for every person. So that's what I would do. And once you go on video, the content becomes unique. It's no longer just what we have produced. It is your unique style, your unique personality is on that content. Yeah, and I, and I think a big part of it is, um, first of all, if it's helpful for you, make a list of the topics that you love to cover or your methodology, like what makes you, you? What, what gets you jazzed up and excited? Make a list of those topics. And maybe it's a certain you know, phrase that you always say to people in your coaching. Um, you know, some kind of, um, you know, your, your slogan or something like that. Like, what is, what makes you, you make a list of that. And then the second, and so just draw a line on your, on your, you know, sheet of paper. That's the, that stuff on the left is your methodology, your slogans, what makes you unique. Then on the right, write stories. You know, what are some stories that you have experienced maybe as a child in your youth, as an adult, uh, maybe stories of other family or friends or your clients, what are stories that you can tell? And those stories would relate to your, your methodology and your slogans and all in, in, in who you are. Those stories relate, right? So you can kind of draw a line like, okay, this story relates to this um, life experience. And, and, and that's why I say, you know, go big or go home. Like, why do you say the, the slogans that you do like go big or go home, or, you know, you practice what you preach or whatever statements that are kind of ringing mm -hmm. in your head. Those are your methodologies. That's what you stand for. 
you pair that with your stories. Then when you read through one of the articles that you download on PLR.me or an ebook or a presentation, you are reading it through the lens of you, your stories, your branding, and your voice. So if that methodology that you've articulated and, and uh, refined in that document, if that's like top of mind, when you actually read through the content, you can now start pairing that with your stories and, and adding in your own mm -hmm. slogans and your methodology and, you know, how do you help people? Well, this is how I help people. This is my three-step plan. You can mm -hmm. relate that to your success article or your confidence, you know, course or whatever it is, but you need to know who you are and you need to know mm -hmm. what you stand for. And then it becomes easy to just kind of weave it into the fabric of the existing content. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, one question actually, and this came up, Ronnie, uh, but just uh, Khalid has asked, will we create PLR in Arabic? No, we actually create everything in English, but this is where there's a huge market. If you take the content and translate it into your native language, we have people using it in Spanish, in Portuguese, in French, suddenly they are the number one in their country because the majority of our audience are uh, English speaking based. So you have a huge advantage. If you can translate this into another language and into your, your, your native language, it's a huge plus as well. And, and actually I can tell you that one of our biggest audiences are actually the Portuguese Brazilian market, mm -hmm. right? So they're taking our content, rewriting it, turning it into courses and eBooks and membership sites to serve the massive Brazilian market. It's a huge market, right? And now you can think for yourself, we have some clients who are dominating the Dutch market, right? That's just, that's the, that's their clientele. That's where they're focusing on. So the cool thing is you can take the content and then rewrite it in your native tongue, or you could hire translators and all sorts of different things there. But that is another way. If that's who you are, if that's the type of people you serve, you mm. can absolutely take the content and translate it. Um, okay. So will we be doing this regularly? Richard? Yes, <laughs> we're going to be doing yes, this weekly. That came up several times. Um, I know there's a lot of other questions and we're sort of almost at the hour mark. Um, so any last, last minute questions, if you want to put that into the chat, please go ahead. Um, uh, so Lyle, if I brought a large credit package, can I use the tools? So Lyle, uh, that is only if, if you're on an annual or a monthly plan. Okay. So pay as you go credits, uh, that you don't get access to the tools. It's only on the annual monthly plans. Actually, Richard, that reminds me, um, we do, can we, we do, do have that, that special offer, right? We have, um, you, you may. We, we should actually talk about that because, you know, if you want to become a member, if you want mm -hmm. to become a member at the annual level um, for for two ninety nine per year, you get 400 credits. Um, what that boils down to is you get access for the entire year. You have access to all the tools for the entire year. You mm -hmm. have an entire year to use 400 credits. If you run out, you get a discounted rate on additional credits. I think it works out to like 70 cents per credit. So it's a huge discount. Um, and it's also a discount off of the regular public price. So um, the I'm going to just paste the link that's, in the chat. That's a pretty good deal. It is a pretty good deal. Um, sign up again. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I just pasted the link in the chat, plr.me slash S299400. Uh, that stands for $299 for 400 credits. And um, again, the, the if that's you, what it stands for. What's that? That's what it stands for. <laughs> it only took you a little while for that, but yes, that's exactly that that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so two ninety nine um, per year. So you have access for a full year. Um, the 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 again. This is if you if you're a fit. If 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 not, if you still need time, you want to use your free credits. You can go ahead and absolutely do that. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you have more questions, again, submit those questions. So I just wanted to mention that because I realized we're at the hour mark and we didn't tell you about that, um, but that really is such a great deal. So that way you have a whole year, you can use the content and you can use the tools, which we just teased you a little bit about. We'll have to get into more detail in the future. I, I, on one question I just wanted to answer, people asked, was this live? And I can confirm that it is actually the 17th of October, 2018. <laughs> 
So You're it's hilarious. as large as it gets. <laughs> You're hilarious. No, no, it's April 19th, 2021, but you're hilarious. Uh, that was really good. Uh, one thing that uh, Richard is really good at is cracking jokes. And half the time, the team doesn't know if he's joking or if he's serious. So <laughs> half the time, I don't know whether I'm joking or not. <laughs> uh, okay, so some quick questions. So um, Carolyn asked, what would 400 credits approximately allow you to get? Uh, so 400 credits would be like 400 articles, um, or it would be like 40 ebooks uh, or 40 presentations. Um, obviously, it depends. I mean, we have courses. Our most popular courses are around 150 to 200 credits, but that gets you everything to promote a course. The course itself, the emails, the sales page, the presentations, like, like a whole marketing package, right? Um, so we have some bundles that are 50 credits. We have some bundles that are 150 credits. Um, but generally, if you think about it as one article uh, is one credit, one ebook is like 10 credits or one presentation is like 10 credits. Um, so that should give you a good sense about that. Um, what is included in the membership, Regina is asking. So the membership gives you access to credits, right? So that allows you to download products. You also get access to the tools. Um, the tools are software that is entirely web-based that you can, um, we demoed some of them already. So you can use those um, to create uh, presentations or brand your PDFs or brand your images. So they're all included as well. You also get access to the Facebook mastermind group, which we were talking a little bit about earlier. Um, so you can access us, you can access other like-minded um, colleagues, people like yourselves. And sometimes uh, our clients have like, um, uh, they've worked together and created, you know, they've interviewed each other for podcasts or they've created products together or promoted each other. So it's a great community of people um, just like yourselves who you can connect with as well. All of the, the benefits and everything about the, um, the annual plan is mentioned on the page. So just go to plr.me slash S299 um, and 400. So I'll just paste that link again. Um, and... Uh, okay, so uh, someone was asking about church-related content. We mm -hmm. are expanding a lot in the Christian market. Uh, it's been a, our number one request. So there's going to be several um, uh, courses and eBooks and resources relating to to that, um, as well as a whole lot more business and marketing content coming soon as well. Um, okay, so let me see. Sorry, there's a lot. <laughs> You know, and I think I'm mining through the questions that we got. We got so many questions. Um, so we will be answering other questions if we haven't covered them, and we will be looking at them uh, in upcoming uh, open offices. So don't worry about that. We will come back to them, and we'll also check the chat as well just to see. Yeah, uh, we had a question from advisor Anil. Um, he's asking about um, the pricing for the 800 and the 2,500 credits. Um, oh, I made a typo. So I'm going to paste the link in there. So we do have um, a deal on the um, 800 credit plan, which you get for $499 per year. Mm. And normally that's $579. So you're saving $80 right off the bat and you get 800 credits. Um, the best deal uh, per credit is the top end, which is 2,500 credits. That's for $990. That is the best deal that we have. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, for, for that um, 2,500 dollar 2,500 credit plan. Uh, so hopefully that is helpful. Um, Elena, great that you're including Christian material. Uh, Beverly, do we need to copyright our work? Um, yes, but I mean, by, by nature of you publishing it, it is going to be under your copyright. Um, you know, you don't need to uh, register it or anything like that. Um, but of course it means that it's under your brand. Um, you, you can sell it as your own. You get a hundred percent of the sales. Like we don't take anything from you there. Um, and actually that does remind me of a question that we get a lot, uh, within our eBooks on the second page, it's a copyright yeah. notice. And the biggest question is, well, wait a second. I thought we can edit this and make it our own. Yes, you yes, can. You're <laughs> that copyright <laughs> notice is for you to use. Uh, you can take it out if you'd like. But that's really just sort of uh, a message in there that you can keep so that when you sell it uh, and get, or give it away, it, it shows that it's copyrighted to you. So that's what that is. Um, Richard, anything else? No, actually, I think that was very, very good. Yeah, sorry for going a little over time. Um, no. Honestly, I think we can go for hours. I think you, if you have no. any other questions, um, uh, you know, please let us know and please reach out to us in the chat. Uh, yeah. as well on the site. 
Um, and uh, reach out to, to, you know, you can ask for Richard as well in the chat. Uh, Richard would be happy to, to chat with you as well. Um, yeah, anything, anything, any final thoughts? No, no, uh, just so you know, if, if you do reach out to us, it is either Ronnie Chantal or myself that will be on the chat. So uh, you can use the code word, I don't know. Ardent. Use the code word. <laughs> Ask me exactly. for the code word, Max. I only want Richard. <laughs> um, yes, and so there will be a replay. We will be sending that out as well. Um, and look, look for much more of this. Uh, yes. We really appreciate your questions. We really appreciate you spending time with us. If you have any Absolutely. other questions, please do reach out. Um, and I, I look forward to, to helping and serving you and seeing what you do with the content. That's the, the best part. I love to see what you're going to create with the content. Richard, want to send us off? With that, I will say, I will say thank you very much. And that's it. I'm, I'm all out of humor. It's, my humor banks are, are depleted. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I wish, well, I wish everyone the best for 2019. You're, you're so you're so bad. They're gonna think it's pre-recorded. You're so terrible. <laughs> 20, now, now we're in a different year. You're hilarious. Okay. Uh, All right, guys. Take care. And with that, with that, I'll talk to you very soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>